Hi, my name is Corbin Austin. I'm in the 12th grade and I go to Bainbridge High School. And this is my Laws of Life essay titled, The Dog, the Old Lady, and the Boy. In the spring of the 10th grade, my teacher asked if I would be able to walk her grandmother's dog. She informed me that she would be unable to due to her increasing age and leg injury. I happily agreed and walked to her house later that day to meet the two. I knocked on the door and was greeted by a black and white fluffy little beast with a distinctive sneeze and a five foot old woman with a frail body frame, a head of angel silk and piercing pale blue eyes. I arrived at her house with the simple impression that I would just be helping out a sweet elderly lady walk her dog. But over the course of a year and a half, I would come to find that that would be my daily dose of joy. Now anyone who truly knows me knows that I'm not too fond of dogs. It's practically embedded in my DNA that animals are just not my thing. So why did I accept this job? That question still befuddles me to this day. Was it that I couldn't say no to my teacher? Or was it written in the stars that the old lady and I were supposed to meet? When her dog Hercules scampered out to meet his new walking mate, I internally panicked, but I refused to show it. My brain flipped through all the information it had stored on how humans were supposed to interact with animals. So I bent down, implanted my hand in his fur, and stroked back and forth. Everything seemed to be going well, especially with the affirmations coming from the old woman watching us. Oh, he's such a good boy, and he really likes you, she croaked in her distinctive voice that reminded me of a cartoon character from my childhood. I got this in the bag, I thought to myself, and I did have it in the bag. Hercules and I walked the neighborhood every weekday. I got someone to unpack my innermost thoughts to, and he got exercise. It was a win-win. Now, the old woman never ceased to put a smile on my face. She was a little forgetful, which only added to her charm. And every day, she would compliment me on how white my shoes were and ask if they were new, then she would show me her squirrels and tell me about how they would tap on her window for food. And if she had some peanuts, they would approach her and eat directly from her hand like she was the incarnate of Mother Nature herself. I insisted that she need not pay me, but she insisted harder that she must because I was the most special boy in the world. Those words coming from her were payment enough and combined with the excitement she would get from seeing me walk up the driveway every afternoon made me feel like the richest man in the world. Months passed and I could see her memory lapses increase and Hercules began changing. He wouldn't stray far from his home and look longingly at the old woman before leaving. The situation worsened and Hercules wouldn't even leave the house. He knew something was wrong and did not want to leave her side and I didn't want to take him away from her even for those 10 minutes. It felt wrong taking her money because I wasn't there for a job anymore. I was there because I loved being there and helping her and being the highlight of her day and her mind. But her generous spirit combined with her rather terrible memory made her pay me double and even sometimes triple a day. I informed my teacher about this because it didn't settle right in my soul. But she told me that right now, more than ever, her grandmother needs a purpose. And her feeling like she is helping me is her purpose. In those moments, I realized something I'd been feeling all along, that her happiness was contagious. Her jovial smile and attitude would creep into the deepest recesses of your mind and soul and change you, make you see the sunshine brighter, make the flowers smell sweeter, and the breezes feel more enlivening as they dance upon your skin. I realized that day that true happiness comes from making others happy. So I continued as if nothing changed, and it didn't. Every day I saw her, she still had her smile and I mine, and I felt like the richest boy in the world. I'd just like to thank my family and friends for always being by my side along this journey. Thank you to Dr. Chambers for teaching me everything I know and being the one to give me this opportunity. And most importantly, Gigi and Hercules for always being the highlight of my day and giving me one of the most beautiful and amazing experiences of my life. Thank you, and I love you all, and I couldn't have done this without you.